able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sin, exalted above the heavens. You know, it's a privilege to live in these end times. Sometimes it doesn't seem like a privilege, but it is. Because we are called to be a people who shine for Jesus in this dark world. And we are called to be a supernatural people. A people who live in his peace when there's turmoil. A people who love when there's hate. We're called to be a people who are victorious. Not in our own strength, but in his. And this morning, I believe that as we worship him, he is going to pour strength and joy and hope into our hearts. So Lord, we are coming and we are coming right into the throne room of heaven this morning. And we want to exalt your holy name this morning. And we want to magnify you this morning. We want to worship you as you are due. Amen.
I've decided to follow Jesus. We don't follow him because it's always easy, but because his way is better. His way is the best way, and that's why we follow Jesus. There's nothing in this world that can ever compare to his love, his joy, his peace, his goodness. Your goodness, God, surpasses anything that we could ever find in this world. So, Lord, we sing this with all of our hearts that we are following you, Jesus. You're so faithful, God. So faithful you are, Jesus.
He has everything you need, everything, everything. If you need joy this morning, that's Jesus. If you need love this morning, that's Jesus. He's just pouring out his love right now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Everything we need, Emmanuel, God with us, God with us, Emmanuel. Jesus, Jesus, our healer. I need more of you, Holy Spirit. Come on, just open your mouth and just cry out. I need more of you, Jesus. How I need your presence, Jesus.
somebody's heart right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for the power in your cross, Lord. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blood, God. We thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because you are holy.
grateful for that cross. Thank you, Jesus. We just surrender everything to you right now in your presence, Lord. We surrender every care, every fear, every worry, every burden, Lord, in your presence right now. Let's just sing that, that we surrender all to him. Just surrender it to him today. He wants to take it from you. He doesn't want you carrying that heavy load because his yoke is easy and his burden is light.
Just touch your people with whatever they need this morning. Peace in their minds, health in their bodies. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we receive. We receive right now in your presence, Lord. Just while we're in the presence of the Lord, I just like Camilla to come forward and, you know, we've experienced so many healings in this past couple of weeks and I just, Camilla just shared something with me during the week and I just felt it would really encourage you. So just if you would just stay in the atmosphere, praise, we just play very quietly. Camilla, if you would just come. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Glory to our beautiful God. He walks between us here. We can feel him, I think, more and more. I came here today, I'm with you, to, give, to be a witness to what he's doing in, uh, in my life and in the life of my family. Two weeks ago, my husband uh, was healed from the pains that he suffered since I know him. Glory to God for that. And my, myself, I didn't have such a big, big problem or, or, or big issue. And to be honest to all of you, I got kind of used to it because for almost all of my life, I was working with really harsh chemicals and my hands were in beads since I remember. Skin was peeling off. Um, I had holes that they were opening. I, I did everything what I could in the normal way. I was on steroids. I was buying three tubes of cream every week. I was putting gloves in the nighttime to stop uh, them from cracking. Uh, and when we came back home, Shane with no pain, I look at my arms and Shane saw them as well being, being open and being whole red. And he asked me, why you didn't ask Lord to do something with them? And to be totally with honest with you, I didn't because I gave enemy the permission to, to do that to me. I agree with that. It was, all, it was always there. That day we started to pray with the words that our Bible teachers were putting to me for the last year in the Bible school, with the words that I hear here in this church uh, preached by our pastor John. Shane was putting hands on them and saying, God can do for you what he did to me. Amen. Glory to God, guys. And, and my hands are whole. <laughs> guys, I really, 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 really have a feeling that because Christ died for all of us, it's done, it's finished. Now we have a huge pantry of our holy God, of our daddy, and we just have to go into that pantry, take the ingredients that we hear on our Bible school, in, in church here, and press, and press. And even if it feels totally stupid, because it did to me, church, it really it looks so strange when you sit in work or you see at home and you talk to your hands that they are full and holy in Jesus' name because he died for us. Church, let's go to this pantry. Let's invade the pantry of our daddy. Let's take all of the ingredients and let's bash the enemy for our beautiful country island. Glory to God, guys. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Father. If there's anyone in this place that needs healing in their body, just lift up your hands up and receive it this morning. Just receive it from, like Camilla said, that heavenly pantry. Lord, we just thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you, Lord. And we just receive that healing in our bodies and that peace in our minds this morning. Just receive it now in his presence. His presence is here and his presence is healing. His presence is joy. His presence is peace. His presence is everything you need this morning. Just receive it. Just receive it by faith. Don't try and do it in your own strength. Jesus already paid that price. You just need to receive it. It may not come right, in, right now, instantly, but it will come if you stand. We just thank you, Father. Just lift your hand up this morning if you received healing in your body last week. 
Just wave your hand if you received healing in your body last week in the meetings. Anybody? Yes, just wave your hand if you received healing. Amen. Well, we just thank you. This is just the beginning for us as a body of, of, of Christ to step into that miraculous, into that healing anointing. We just receive it. We know that an impartation was left for us here, that it's not dependent on a person or a minister. It's dependent on you tapping in and receiving by faith just like that woman with the issue of blood who came up and she touched the hem of Jesus's garment and she was made whole and that hole was nothing missing nothing broken Jesus doesn't want any brokenness in your life that does not give him glory that is the enemy's part but God has so much more for every one of us so we just thank you today in your presence Lord there is fullness of joy and in your presence there is healing in Jesus name amen praise God what well, if you'd like to take your seats and if you're a first-time visitor today we just love you to keep standing so we can see who you are and, and welcome you this morning if you're a first-time visitor we'd like you to keep standing you're very welcome this morning bless you if you keep your hand up our ushers will give you a guest pack uh, you can keep your hands up anybody else your first time here today yes at the back there yes where are you from sir can you shout it out to us where are you from? Dublin? I <laughs> can't hear. One of our ushers could help us. Georgia, you're very welcome today. Yes, sir, you, where are you from? Nigeria, you're welcome this morning. Yes, these two ladies here, where are you from? Malaysia, you're both from Malaysia, welcome this morning. Up here at the back, yes. From Nigeria? Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Alva. <laughs> Got your name right this time from Ashford. Wicklow, you're welcome. Uh, okay, here, sir, you're from? India. And we might get a guest pack up here as well. Thank you on the balcony. You're welcome from India. Yes, you're from? From Dublin, you're very welcome this morning. Yes, here. Brazil, bem-vindo. Yes, you're welcome. Where are you from? Spain, bienvenidas. Anybody else? We have everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be. Have we missed anyone? Over here? Oh, sorry. You're, where are you from? Dublin? Poland. Poland. Oh, Poland. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Dublin. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I think, yeah, they said they're from Spain. Yeah, they were. Yeah, we welcome. <laughs> okay. If I could just have my, um, my Bible and my. Uh, notebook we're just gonna just before we take up the offering just a few quick announcements so if you're a teenager between the ages of 14 and 18 our teens are in the service and um, just uh, in the upstairs of the ringside over there and next week the, the, pre, the destiny preteens will be in uh, with uh, Max and Sarah or Alex and Karina whoever's on um, just reminding you if you have a baby we have a live stream in the chapel just through those double doors there you can watch the service in there if your baby's uh, not settling uh, we have our men built men meeting in the chapel at uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. just through those double doors I'm not sure about agape or agape due to meet this week Valentine they are yes okay so agape young couples are meeting at 7 p.m. in the chapel this uh, this Wednesday. Also, we have our prayer meeting as well in the chapel this Sunday, uh, Friday at 7:30. Um, so you can join us for prayer. Um, we're also looking for more uh, volunteers for our ushers team. So if you have any uh, experience in ushering or helping, uh, you're a good team player. We'd love to um, have you involved. You can sign up at the Get Connected table, and. Um, also, we have our, our hoodies, our new hoodies for sale. Um, they're going to be 25, sorry, let me just get one so you can see. One second. I was supposed to put it on, but it's actually so hot in here. Um, so, let me see. So this is just one of them. It's Dare to Dream. And it has, it has the lovely logo, All Nations logo, with all the flags of the nations. So we have it in black, uh, sorry, gray and black. We have it in navy and white, plus we have Rediscover Life. It's a sort of smaller print in both colors as well. So the Dare to Dream is 30 euro and the Rediscover is 25 euro. You can pay 
at the Get Connected table this morning. We can pay through cash or through credit card. Just reminding you, if you pre-ordered one yourself, um, you know, you can go and get your one. If you haven't pre-ordered, it's just first come, first serve, whatever styles and sizes are available. Uh, so we're excited. Thank you, Chester, for the amazing work you did on that. I know it was a lot of work. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so just before I take up the offering, I'd just like Jill just to maybe um, just share a little bit with Bible School is coming up uh, on the, for first time people on uh, September, Monday to September the 19th at 7.30 on Zoom. So she's encouraging people to sign up. So you can tell us why. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, we start again on Monday the 19th. It's only two weeks away. Uh, so I'm really addressing the people who haven't started that you might start. Um, just to say, the former class one that was there, you now go up to class two on Monday again. Class three is the new old class two. You're on Tuesday, 7.30, and second year is Tuesday. So I'm talking to the people who haven't done it yet. We used to say come to Bible school, but now we don't because you can't. You do it at home. So you join, okay? So I'm encouraging you to come and join Bible school on a Monday evening. It's extremely easy. You don't have to go anywhere. You sit at home. It's completely free. Um, so there's no excuse. In addition, we record it every evening. So if you're not free on a Monday or you have to put your kids to bed at 7.30 or you're working late, you can get the recording and you can listen to it later in the week. So it's been made extremely available but why do we do it because we all need to renew our mind there's one scripture in in romans god said i plead with you i beg you i beseech you get your mind renewed there's nowhere else he says that he says do this do that and do the next thing but with this renewing your mind is so important every problem that you're facing right now is really a renewed mind problem because if you get the word of God, the word is your answer. You will find answers in Bible school. You will find, you know, if you come with a heart for it, you know, if you come with an enthusiastic mind. As you all know, when you're born again, your spirit is new. It's the same spirit as Jesus. Can we get that? In you right now, if you're born again, Christ is in you. Christ is in your spirit. You have been given the same degree of Holy Spirit as he did as he had on the earth but we all have a soul now his soul was perfect ours is not maybe yours is but mine isn't we need and the soul is the mind the will and the emotions that's what you have to work on it will answer your problems it will set you free to get your mind renewed where do you find the answer in the bible I'm just going to read you a scripture quickly you know in 2 timothy 1 7 it talks about fear we are in a time where we are there is a lot of fear around, and God wants us to be courageous. He wants us to help the people who are in fear. But it says in 1 Tim 2 Timothy 1 7, God did not give us a spirit of fear. It's a spirit. Kick it out. Get rid of it, okay? But has given us a spirit of power. We have got the power of Christ in us. You are amazing beings, if you could just see yourself in the spirit, of power and love and a calm, well-balanced, disciplined, and self-controlled mind. That's what we get when we knew it. We want to be self-controlled. We want to be disciplined. We want to be calm. We will be a light in the darkness to the people who are stressed. So, and I want to just finish with this. In Romans 12, where he talks about, please do this. I beg you, do this. This is what God's saying to us. In the New Living, it says, come and get your mind renewed. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But listen to this. Let God transform you into a new person. Don't we need that? A new person? We need to be transformed into a new person by changing the way you think. Okay, so we encourage you to come we will give you a foundation in the word of god and then hopefully you'll study it for the rest of your life all of us we study the word every day we listen to stuff to keep it vibrant because the world is out there pushing us so you have christ in you but you need to get that mind to come in line with him so you can be really powerful for the gospel so encourage you next week two weeks 
19th of September, you can get a, a form on the Get Connected desk or you can go onto the website and you can join online and it's free, okay? So we look forward to seeing everybody <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen? Amen, thank you. And Jill's doing such an amazing job um, leading that Bible school, wouldn't you agree, amen? <laughs> okay. So we're going to take up our offering this morning, and again, if you need a gift aid envelope or a missions envelope, you can put your hand up, one of our ushers will give it to you in your zone, uh, reminding you to put your gift aid number on the envelope, please. Um, so I'm just going to read from Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44, and I'm reading it from the Passion. It says, Then he, Jesus, sat down near the offering box, watching all the people dropping in their coins. Many of the rich would put in very large sums, but a destitute widow walked up and dropped in two small copper coins worth less than a penny. Jesus called his disciples to gather around, and then he said to them, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given a larger offering than any of the wealthy. For the rich only gave out of their surplus, but she sacrificed out of her poverty and gave to God all that she had to live on, which was everything she had. And I know when I was a child, I'd heard that little um, story in, in Sunday school, and it always really touched me, the thought of this little woman who was so poor, but everything that she had, she gave it away in the, little, in the offering. And, um, you know, the illustration for us is that, you know, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this earth are very different. You know, people would have looked in, at, at that time at those rich rulers and think, wow, they're throwing in their you know, they're gold coins, and look at them. But, you know, that didn't impress Jesus. In fact, it, 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 it gave him, um, he, he got his disciples together because it, it really came to his attention what had happened. And he told them that this is the way the kingdom of, of this world, of, the, of, the, of, the, of God works. It's rather better to give cents than hundreds of euro if you're giving with the right heart. Jesus looks at our heart. You know, it talks about that in the book of Samuel, that God doesn't look at the outward appearance, but he looks at our heart. And our giving, it, does it cost us to give? Sometimes over the years when we were tithing and offering, you know, we would small kids and, you know, not much coming in financially with, with our jobs, but we always made that uh, commitment to tithe and to give God the first fruits because it belongs to him. And we saw the hand of God move every single time. We never lacked, we never missed a meal. You know, it's no sweat for a celebrity, an A-list celebrity, to give a million euro. Often you see that, them giving them to charities and so on. But for those who are struggling financially, and it costs a lot for them to give, that moves the heart of God. It also shows your faith and your trust in God that, you know, He is able, regardless if your bank account has nothing in it, when you honor Him with your first fruits, He can go to work. For you're sowing a seed that will never leave your life. Um... The last scripture I wanted to read was in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, again in the Passion. It says, let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. So when we give to God this morning, don't give if you, don't, if you have a heart that doesn't want to give. If you feel like you're being compelled to give, only give because you want to give and because you love God and because you're honoring him with what he's already blessed you with in your life. So Father, we thank you this morning as we give this morning for those, Lord, who maybe are struggling financially, that maybe need jobs, that maybe need homes. Lord, we just thank you that you are a God of abundance, that no good thing will you withhold from those who walk uprightly before you. And we just speak breakthrough right now as they plant that seed, Lord, as a little, that, that offering as a little seed into the soil. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that that seed will produce a harvest in their life. It will not leave their lives. It will not leave their hand, Lord, but it will produce a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold in the name of Jesus. Right now, we bind all lack in the body of Christ, and we just thank you, Father, that you meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if we just pass the baskets around this morning, if you want to give through PayPal, uh, we'll just put the details up on the screen there, or maybe we did already. <laughs>
Um, but you can give through PayPal, you can give through bank transfer and check. All the details are on our website also for those of you who are watching online. Amen. How many of you glad to be in church? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Um, let's, let's pray. Father, we just thank you today in Jesus' name for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord, that you are here and that you're going to manifest your power in this place today. And we open our hearts and we say, Spirit of God, do what you desire to do in this place. Heal, touch, deliver, sail, save, set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, if you could remain standing, we're going to read Colossians chapter 1, 13 to 18 together. And the title of the message is, Christ is enough. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read together out loud in Jesus' name. Colossians 1 and verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he may have the preeminence you may be seated amen so Colossians 1 18 says that in all things he may have the preeminence Christ is enough. A.W. Tozer said this, Christ is enough to have him and nothing else is to be rich beyond measure. But to say that is one thing and to live that is another. Amen. It's something entirely to live it because it's easy to say that Christ is enough. But do you live like Christ is enough? Do we live our lives like Christ is enough? Because in a narcissistic, hedonistic, superficial consumer culture that is constantly telling us that you need to buy this or that product in order to be happy. You need to wear this. You need to drive that. You need to live there in order to be fulfilled. Can we honestly say that Christ is enough? That Christ is all I want. Christ is all I need. Paul the Apostle said in Philippians 1.19, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now Christ may be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death, for me to live as Christ and to die is gain. 
Can we say like Paul the Apostle, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You see, Paul was a man who had tunnel vision. He had one focus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He said, this one thing I do. He wasn't, you know, focused on a whole lot of different things. He had one focus, and that was Jesus. I want to live for Jesus. He declared that Christ is enough. I originally preached this message about six months ago at the cross during uh, the, the papal cross in the Phoenix Park. We were having an illegal gathering uh, during lockdown. Was that six months ago or was that a year ago? I can't remember. A year ago? Wow. Life has become a bit of a blur. But anyway, last year I preached this message at the cross. Uh, and, and, you know, strictly speaking, it was, it was cold. That's okay. But it was an illegal gathering. But, you know, I'd felt deeply disquieted for quite some time. That during what was one of the darkest times in our history, that the church was closed. You know, you had off licenses open and you had supermarkets open, etc. But, you know, the one place that people could find the living bread from heaven was closed. And um, uh, I felt personally that I had to make a stand. And so on Sunday morning, we went to the cross uh, to, to worship in the Phoenix Park. This, this beautiful 115-foot high cross where one time a million people gathered uh, when the Pope came in, I think it was 1979. I was actually, I wasn't there in the Phoenix Park, but I, I think he, he went to Limerick. And um, about a quarter of a million people turned up to see Pope John Paul. Lovely man, God-fearing man, but uh, uh, I remember being so impressed. I was only five or six, but I remember seeing the helicopter arrive. Man, I tell you something, it was nothing on the Beatles. This was, this was like, I didn't, I didn't know what he was going to do. I, 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 I was just, you know, it was amazing. But, um, but anyway, we gathered that, that beautiful uh, white cross. My friend, Pastor Tunde from the Redeemed uh, Church was there, and he was praying for me. And he said afterwards, Pastor John, he said, three times the guardi came, there was a long cavalcade, there was a van and there was cars. They came into the car park, three times they came, and three times they drove out again. And I was like, praise the Lord for that. Because <laughs> I was sure I was going to be arrested. And, um, but you know, I, I think it's significant, you know, that in what was a very dark time, we found refuge at the foot of the cross. Amen. And as we stood beneath that beautiful, uh, you know, 115 foot high cross, uh, you know, I certainly was reminded that, that we serve a God who understands suffering, having suffered himself. You see, the cross was a symbol of suffering, and therefore, the Bible says we have not a Savior who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. One was tempted in all points, like as we are yet without sin. And so if you're suffering, know this, Christ understands. He felt what you feel. He stood where you stand. He understands even when nobody else does. And so as we stood beneath that cross, I found hope. And, you know, a number of weeks ago, I drove past her. And I just felt that peace and that hope and that comfort again as I drove past that cross with my kids. Because I remember what it was like to leave my home during lockdown with my kids in the car and, and, and driving up to the cross, knowing that most likely I was going to be arrested for what I was doing. But again, I didn't do so because I was looking to provoke the Gardaí in any way. I respect them. They have a very difficult job to do. But again, I believe that time came to take a stand. And so, like I said, the cross reminds us that our God understands suffering. He suffered betrayal, shame, and unimaginable, you know, physical uh, pain and horror. He stood alone at the cross. You see, he is a God who gave his all for us, and he expects us to give our all for him. You know, Patrick was a man who implicitly understood that. Patrick, the, the patron saint of Ireland. You know, 1,500 years ago, he was brought to this island as a slave from Great Britain. And he suffered, uh, you know, in this nation because he was abandoned on a mountainside, you know, minding the herds of those who had taken him captive and, 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 and enslaved him. He was subject to the harsh Irish elements 
And, um, you know, he was battling hunger and, and thirst and cold and, and hopelessness. And yet, by God's glorious grace, Patrick encounters Christ in, in this place of despair and loneliness. Think about how frustrating that must be for the devil. That the very place that was meant to destroy him ends up becoming the place that defines him. Because Ireland has forever become associated with Patrick, and Patrick with Ireland. He's our, our patron saint, even though ironically he's British. For those of you who've just come to Ireland, understand Ireland is a place of paradoxes. But Patrick is forever associated with the land of his captivity. And it was in this place of suffering that Patrick comes to understand the words of Christ to Paul, where he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Patrick came to the very same place in his life, and he declares in the midst of his captivity, Christ is enough. And, and suddenly, his place of captivity becomes a place of encounter. Because if you read the confession of, of Patrick, it's the oldest writings we have in this nation. Um, uh, you know, the, the confession of Patrick, he's writing his, uh, um, you know, he tells his story um, in, in the confession. But, but he writes about how, you know, night and day, he would pray and seek the face of God. A hundred uh, times during the day and again at night, he would cry out to God in this place of, of, of captivity and loneliness. And, and the amazing thing is this, that loneliness and cold and hunger or neglect no longer concerned him because he had become connected with something that wasn't based on his circumstances or his surroundings. He had connected with heaven. And therefore, again, he, 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 he was able to receive everything that heaven had for him. And he was no longer concerned about his suffering because he discovered in his place of slavery that Christ is enough even there. And then God, you know, uh, speaks to Patrick and reveals that his time of slavery is coming to an end and that there is a boat awaiting for him, but that boat is 200 miles away. And again, the penalty for an escaped slave is death. And yet Patrick, by faith, leaves. God brings him um, uh, to this boat, brings him back uh, to Great Britain, to the safety and, and love and comfort of his family. But amazingly, one night God sends an angel named uh, Victoricus to, uh, who appears to Patrick and he has letters. And, and he has letters from, uh, from the Irish because Vox Hibernia in Latin means... Uh, the voice of the Irish and suddenly Patrick hears the voices of all of these men and women who had oppressed him and who had you know taken him as slave and Patrick's heart is moved and 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 like I said he hears uh, the, the voice of the Irish and just like the prophet Isaiah who went before him he responds to this encounter by declaring here am I send me and Patrick um, understandably is criticized, he's misunderstood, he's even labeled as reckless. He writes this in his confession. People say, who is this guy going to this pagan people, this violent, you know, uh, pagan people, um, uh, endangering his life? And uh, Because he's going back to Ireland on what seems like a suicide mission. Because again, the penalty for an escaped slave is death. Patrick seems to be sealing his fate to go back there, and yet, in spite of the danger, the criticism, and the many challenges, Patrick comes to Ireland with a message of hope, a message of salvation, a message of freedom. And this is the irony, is that the escaped slave returns to those who once enslaved him with a message of life and liberty. Amen. The, the, the slave returns to bring freedom to his captors. Patrick faced many trials and tribulations along the way, many dangers in his ministry on this island. He was, uh, he was captured and enslaved at least three times, but each time God delivers him. You know, by God's grace, he prevails. And he not only brings Christ to Ireland, he brings Ireland to Christ. And this is the beautiful thing, is that, you know, he brought this nation to Christ. You know, Patrick understood he was in a battle for eternal souls. And this is why, you know, he wasn't surprised at the attacks and the trials and the challenges that he faced along the way. 
I want to write, uh, I want to read to you a prayer that Patrick wrote, and it's known as uh, Patrick's breastplate. And I think this ancient prayer, you know, perfectly illustrates Patrick's understanding of the fact that he was in a battle. I rise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the Trinus, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I rise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I rise today through the strength of the love of cherubim, in the obedience of angels, in the servants of archangels, in the hope of resurrection. To meet with reward in the prayers of patriarchs, in the predictions of prophets, in the preaching of apostles, in the faith of confessors, in the stability uh, of the earth, the firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me. From snares of devils, from temptations of vices, from any, everyone who would wish me ill, afar and near. I summon today all these powers between me and these evils, against every cruel and merciless power that may oppress my body and soul, against incantations of false prophets, against black laws of pagandom, against false laws of heretics, against craft of idolatry, against spells of witches and smiths and wizards, against every knowledge that corrupts man's body and soul. Christ to shield me today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the Trinus, through confession of the oneness of the Creator of creation. Thank you, Jesus. Could you give a shout of praise to the Lord today? Fifteen hundred years later, that prayer still resonates in our hearts as we read it. Because this is a man who had come to discover that no matter what he faces, Christ is enough. Christ is enough. It was the prayer of a British man who loved us and our ancestors so much. That he was willing to literally face down the very powers of darkness in bringing the truth to our people. You know what Patrick was saying in this prayer? Christ is enough. Bring it on, devil. I am not afraid. Because I believe that Christ is enough. Christ is all I want. Christ is all I need. But you know what, in all earnestness, I didn't hold those services at the cross, like I said, for exposure or notoriety or to provoke a reaction. I appreciate there are some who consider being arrested a badge of honor, but that certainly wasn't my desire. Like I said, I I, I wasn't looking for a confrontation with the Gardaí when we gathered. I respect them. They have a very difficult job. We simply held our outdoor services, as I did on Easter Sunday morning, Because I was concerned about God's glory. Do you know the Revelation chapter 22 and verse 7 to 9? It declares, worship God. It gives one command. Worship God. We worship by divine command, not by government authorization. So we gather to worship and to pray and to proclaim, not to protest. You know, as a pastor, I'd been deeply concerned about the fact that the churches in Ireland had been closed for months and that God deserved to be worshipped. Do you know that even during the Blitz in London, when there was nightly bombings, people still gathered to worship God? 
Because what he said in Matthew 18, where two or more gathered in my name, he did not mean on Zoom. Praise God for that, you know what that facilitates us to do. But it is no substitute for the gathering of the saints. Come on, look around you today. This is beautiful. It's beautiful. Come on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. For these few hours today, this is the house of the Lord. I don't know what crazy stuff is going to be going on here during the week. My understanding is some kind of pole dancing or something. But that's why I put the cross there. We are here right now and we are here to worship. We are here to honor God. Are you uncomfortable, Pastor John? No, I'm not. The last building I had used to be a brothel. I believe that's part of my calling. I'm called to bring light into dark places. Glory to God. The darker our society becomes, the more the light of the gospel is going to shine. Glory to Jesus. Church, it's time for us to shine. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of what Jesus did for me on the cross. Let the world mock. Let the world say what they will. I'm going to shine the gospel. I'm going to do my best to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. He is the answer. So we gathered at the cross because the previous Easter we had been closed and we were meant to be closed that Easter as well. I said, Lord, in all good conscience, I cannot for a second Easter not gather with the saints. So at 6 a.m. we gathered for a sunrise service to pray and to worship and we prayed for this nation. And by God's grace, those restrictions were lifted not too long afterwards because God answers prayer. He answers prayer. How many of you we serve a God who answers prayer? You see, there's a sacred aspect to the gathering of the saints that secular governments must never interfere with. Amen? Because public worship is a sacred tradition that Christians have followed for 2,000 years. Amen? And so, again, I do not believe we have the right to redefine the Great Commission in the name of safety or the greater good. Because that is a communist term. The greater good. No, God doesn't deal with us as groups. He deals with us as individuals. Amen? And so there is no, when they talk about the greater good, there is no greater good than the proclamation of the eternal, everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ that can save eternal souls from hell. There's no greater good than the preaching of the gospel. And that is why we gather and it is, it is so important because no government, no doctor, no dictator or minister or pastor for that matter has the right to stop the people of God from gathering to worship the king of kings. Could somebody say amen? amen. Matthew 10, 25, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let me say this. The day is drawing near. The day of Christ's return. If you can't see it, I I, I pray God will open your eyes. You know, God spoke to me so strongly last night. I was reading Ezekiel 33. You know, over the last number of messages I've given, particularly on joy. I was speaking to you as a watchman on the wall. And yet many believers are completely oblivious to what is happening right now. I don't know if any of you saw President Biden's speech this week. He looked like he was speaking from the very bowels of hell. I'm not looking for applause. I'm just acknowledging. You know, I believe many of our leaders have chosen their sides. And we as the church have to stop sitting on the fence and hiding away from these, these issues out of fear of appearing political. The gospel affects every realm of, of, of society. And let me say this. If the church doesn't speak up, the time is going to quickly come, just like in Hitler's Germany, where we will not be allowed to speak, where we will not be allowed to gather. These people are sold out to so many demonic agendas. And it's, it is important for us as the church that we are aware, that we are awake. And so, anyway... Um, why do we gather? We were, ga- we were gathered because I was conscious of the needs of my congregation. Aside from God's glory, I saw many people who needed, you know, pastoral care. And so, as a pastor, I decided to minister to the people of God. 
where were, you, where, were you, where were you, Pastor, about being labeled or being judged? Well, if I was, I wouldn't be preaching the gospel. You see, Hebrew, Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 7 says, Thus says the Lord, consider your ways and thoughtfully reflect on your conduct. We must consider our ways because when we're more concerned about what people might think or say, rather than with offending God, we will miss it every time. What matters is that we honor and obey God. Amen. Because again, it's all for His glory. It's not about you and it's not about me. It never was. It is truly all about Christ because He is enough. He gets all of the glory because it is His kingdom. It is His power. It is His gospel, His eternal truth, His salvation, His love, His hope, His name, His church. His resurrection, His ascension, His spirit, His saving, delivering power. And this is why we must take serving God seriously in this day. You know, one thing that is common I find from talking to pastors, whether in this nation or, or around the world, one of the common things is this, is that in spite of everything we've seen over the last number of years, Many people ha are not as faithful as they were before COVID. I, I find that shocking when we see so many, you know, antichrist agendas clearly at play. They're no longer even hiding them. They're no longer even hiding these agendas. And yet, you know, talking to pastors, you, you know, from around the world and here in this nation, it's the same thing. People who are coming three or four times a month to church, now coming once or twice. People, we need to wake up. We need to wake up and make a decision. Okay, if I'm a Christian, then I'm going to live for Christ. Okay? Because this thing is sitting on the fence. I mean, utterly oblivious to what's going on around us is extremely dangerous. You know, so we must remember it's all about Him. Christ is enough. May we never be dumb enough to get in the way of what God wants to do or to take the glory that belongs to Him alone. Amen? Because as a pastor, I get tired of the political games that go on sometimes among ministers because again when our very first question is what is in this for me how will this make me look or how will this make my ministry look or will this be to my advantage rather than simply asking the question will God be honored and glorified by this it shows that our hearts are wrong Acts 8 and 21 it says you have no part to share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God you know, the Amplified, it says your heart, your motive, your purpose is not right before God. You see, God sees our hearts. And therefore, you know, if the church is ever to live up to its high and its holy calling, amen, we need to drop the personal agendas and ambitions, the parochial attitudes, you know, uh, the trendy causes and the woke lectures. And we need to get back to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to preach the gospel in its simplicity. Amen. We don't need to add to the gospel and we certainly don't need to modernize or moderate the message just because it might offend somebody who has decided to, you know, uh, indulge their perverse uh, inclinations. Uh, no, Christ is still enough. He is still mighty to save. And he said in Luke chapter 9 and verse 26, if you're ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. It says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words uh, of the son of, of him, the son of man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and of his fathers and of the holy angels. I, I truly believe this, the return of Christ is near because personally, I do not believe that we can continue on the tangent we are as a society, you know, uh, castrating little children, cutting pieces off their body, you know, provoking God with all of the sin, all of the perversion, and then, you know, with this kind of self-righteous, virtuous attitude that they take towards what they are doing, killing, you know, millions of babies every year. I'm sorry, as a society, we have clearly stepped over the line. I find it ironic when you see Western nations talking about our values to other nations what values there's a river of blood that flows through our nations we must fall on our faces in repentance because I truly believe we are provoking the wrath of God by the way that we live and I include much of the church in that as the church we're watching the same rubbish on TV that many of the world are in the name of entertainment where are the men and women who carry the burden of the Lord? Who are burdened about the state of this lost and confused generation? We know better. Jesus said to whom much is given, much will be expected. 
If a lost person is living like a lost person, a person who's in darkness, you know, it's completely natural that a child of the devil will live like the devil. But what about us? Too many times we're walking in the half-light of neither being in light nor in darkness. Is it okay if I get real today? John 12 and 32. If I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men unto me. You see, our job is to simply lift him up. Our job is to simply lift him up. Because like I said, we have an epidemic of, of, of addiction, mental health issues, homelessness, despair, domestic abuse, marriage breakdown, along with war, inflation, and suicide. And we're still playing church. We're still thinking God's pleased with me turning up once a month. Where's my medal, God? Where's my little gold star? It's time to stop playing church. It's time to be the church. This world needs us to be the church. The reason why many of them have not accepted Christ is not because of Christ. Wasn't it Mahatma Gandhi once said, I love your Christ. I don't love your Christians. They're so unlike your Christ. Do you find that convicting? I do. It's time to preach Christ crucified. 1 Corinthians 1, 23. But we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and a folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. You see, Paul the apostle had one message and one message only, and that was Jesus. Jesus. The cross of Christ. Galatians 6, 14. But God forbid that I should boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Turn to your neighbor and say, Christ is enough. I don't know what you need. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what your situation is, but Christ is enough. Christ is enough. He has this. He sees you. He loves you. Build your life on him, and you will stand through every test and every trial that comes your way. Psalm 61, hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. He didn't say if. He said when. When. And those times come to all of us. Those times when we are completely overwhelmed by what is going on or what is going wrong in our lives. Those times when we run out of answers. Those times when, when we run out of hope. The Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Some of you need to stop trying to do this in your strength and learn to surrender to His. That's what God was saying to Paul in that place. My grace is sufficient for you. You didn't start this. You're not going to finish this. Just learn to surrender and trust in Christ. He is enough. Could somebody say thank you, Jesus? When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Who is the rock? Jesus Christ is our rock. When people fail you, when your friends betray you, when you even fail yourself, we come to the cross and we find hope. Why? I look at the cross and I'm reminded that I matter. I look at the cross and I'm reminded that I'm loved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That cross is a symbol of the value that God places on your eternal soul. So people can judge me. People can label me. People can reject me or talk about me. People can even try and kill me. It doesn't matter. The cross declares that I have an inherent value to God. And it declares it to you as well. It declares you are loved. That you are so loved. For God so loved the world. Just say that to yourself today. I'm, I'm loved. 
yeah, you might not be perfect. You might have failed. You might have fought and fallen short in all sorts of ways. But today, the Lord is calling you to come to the rock. The rock of ages, Jesus Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All on the ground. Sinking sand. If you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. That's what the Bible says. Underneath are the everlasting arms. I don't know about you, but I, I sometimes look at my life and I, I think, Lord, I fall short in so many areas. You know, we stumble, we fall. And yet each time we encounter God's grace. You see, unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins, he loved you before he washed you. He loved you when you were still out in the nightclubs, when you were still, you know, involved in drugs or promiscuity or all sorts of darkness. I think it's a beautiful thing. Like I said, our last church we discovered in the process of renovating and it had been used as a brothel. And I remember the guys who told me that were, were laughing, they were sniggering. They thought it was quite funny because we were trying to turn this building into a church. They didn't understand. Light is greater than darkness. Place, this place can be pitch dark. You just turn on one light. You know what happens? Darkness flees. Darkness flees. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Christ is enough. And you know what? Week after week after week, men and women came up that aisle and gave their lives to Jesus Christ in that dirty, smelly old building. Hallelujah. Because we serve a God who lives. We serve a God who conquered death, hell, and the grave. Greater is he that is in us. So bring it on, devil. The greater one is in us. We are more than conquerors through Christ who gives us strength. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Glory to God. You're a victory waiting to happen. So yeah, we stumble. At times we fall. But you know what the Bible says? You know, underneath are the everlasting arms. Some of us thought we were holding on to God. But it's when our strength failed, we discovered that God was holding on to us. Underneath are the everlasting arms. My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. And my portion forever. Hallelujah. It's not about your strength. It never was. It's not about your wisdom. It never was. It's about his. Hallelujah. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. Just learn to surrender to him, child of God, because he loves you. Hallelujah. He loves you. Praise you, Jesus. Build your life on him. This is going to be a two-part message. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken them to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Be under no illusions, people. Difficult times are coming. In fact, there's difficult times are here. And they may get a whole lot crazier. But you know what? When you build your life on the rock, come what may, you're not going to be shaken. Because how many of you know there is no recession in heaven? There is no fear in heaven. You know, I went through a, a, a period where I was really struggling with despair. And just, just this oppression really came on me, and I was really, really struggling for quite some time. But I remember that beautiful song that Cassie sang today, the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is the reason why I'm alive. And the Lord just brought that verse to my remembrance, you know, in the book of Numbers, where they put the brazen serpent up on the pole. And God essentially said to the Jewish people, look and live. Because you see, I'd been looking at myself and looking at my shortcomings, looking at my inadequacy, looking at my weakness, looking at my so many areas where I didn't feel like I was ticking the boxes. 
For you see, when we look at ourselves, we always start to sink, just like Peter. You know, Peter was fine as long as he had his eyes on the Lord, walking on water. It's when he took his eyes off the Lord and started putting them on the circumstances, on the winds and the waves. And let me tell you, there's a lot of winds and waves right now. That's why you need to be careful about what media you're exposing yourself to. You know, recently I've been just, I, I, I often just look at the headlines in the papers and, you know, it, it's gone from, you know, COVID terror to inflation terror to war terror to World War III to this to that to the other. It's so important we guard our hearts. And remember something, God wants us to be at peace. The Bible says, they which have believed have entered into rest. There is a rest that we can have even in these unsettled and turbulent times. We can have a peace that passes understanding. But we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. And we have to remind ourselves, you know what? The God who brought me to it is going to bring me through it. Amen? Christ is enough. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So we're not going to worry about recession, about wars, about any other thing that's going on. You know what? Hallelujah. Our eyes are on Jesus. You know, I'm conscious of my beautiful Ukrainian brothers and sisters. And, and, and everything that's going on there. And many of them have family over there. And they're here in a, a nation, you know, that's so far from home. And they don't, many of them don't speak the language. It, it's not easy. It's difficult. We need to pray for them. But we need to remember that no matter what is going on or what is going wrong, Christ is enough. Christ is enough. And Lord, we just raise up that situation right now. Could you stand to your feet today? Lord, we raise up the Ukraine. Lord, I know that you love the people of Russia. You love the people of Ukraine, Lord. And I pray that you will bring peace in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the Prince of Peace. And Lord, and, uh, Father, I know that there are many mothers and fathers, whether they're Russian or Ukrainian, who are grieving their sons. Others who are living in terror, that their sons may come to harm. And so, Father, we pray that you will bring closure to the situation. And I pray you will grant repentance to any of the Western nations that have been seeking to, to promote this conflict simply because it, it, it you know, enables them to push whatever nefarious agendas they may have. Lord, I pray that you will grant repentance to our nations in Jesus' name. And I pray that you will bring peace to the Ukraine, Lord God. We bless the beautiful people of the Ukraine, Lord. And we pray that you will bring peace in Jesus' name. Let peace come, Lord God. Let there be a cessation of hostilities, Lord God. We pray for repentance. We pray for peace, Lord God, in Jesus' precious name. Lord God, we, we pray for every one of the Ukrainian people, Lord, whether they're in the Ukraine or whether they're scattered throughout all of the nations. Nations. You see them exactly where they are. You see them. You see their scattered families. And you love them. And your hand is upon them, Lord. And we pray that you would help them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to enlarge our hearts in Jesus' name. Help us to enlarge our hearts, Lord God. To help in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we love you. And we look to you today. We know there are so many things going on in the world right now that could trouble us, Lord God. So many things, Lord God, that could cause anxiety in our hearts. I know there's people today wondering, will I have enough money to heat my home? Or will I have enough money to pay my mortgage? Or, or you know, will I have enough money to support my kids and my parents? And Lord, I, I understand, Lord, that these are challenging times. <coughs> but you said this, Lord, let not your hearts be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if we're not if we're not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and we know Lord that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people and I know that this message today is part of that preparation process where you are knocking those rough edges off of us where you are speaking to us personally about where we have to change where we need to change and where you will enable us Lord God because it's not in our strength it's in yours I know you love every person in this place Lord and therefore, we choose to obey your word. We will not let our hearts be troubled because we believe in God and we believe also in you. And we know that in your Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And we have this beautiful promise in verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. 
Lord, you have gone to heaven to prepare a place for us. And you've also promised that one day, and I believe that day is coming soon, where you're going to come back for us. To take us that we may be with you forever in heaven. And so, Lord God, we refuse to be troubled by the evil and wickedness that we see so prevalent by the confusion, the darkness. Lord, we pray that you will enable us to shine for you. You said to arise and shine for our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Lord, nothing that is happening right now is taking you by surprise. Lord, I believe that COVID had been designed. I believe it had been planned. Just as so many other things that are happening right now are not an accident. They have been planned because there is a demonic blueprint. But I thank God that there is a greater blueprint than that which the devil and his followers have. And that is your plan, your purpose, your will, which will always prevail for your people. And you said that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And so, Lord, we are looking to you. And we will not let our hearts be troubled. We will not give in to fear or anxiety or panic or despair because we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Just declare that today. Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on, could you give a shout of praise to the Lord today? Christ is enough. Christ is enough. Praise you, Jesus. Christ is enough. Could we just enter into that chorus for a few moments, please? Come on, people, don't, don't miss what the Lord wants to do right now. Let's just enter into a moment of worship and just make this declaration. Christ is enough.
Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If you've never surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, now is your opportunity. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Do not put off till tomorrow what you need to do right now. If you know in your heart you are not saved, if you know in your heart you are not ready to stand before the Lord, I want you to put up your hand right now in Jesus' name. If you're ready to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you've never done so before, put your hand up high and we're going to pray for you today. Amen. I see those hands. Is there anybody else here? Amen. You're ready to surrender to Jesus Christ. Help me out here, ushers. Is there anybody ready to surrender to Jesus? You say, today, I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. Amen. Because, uh, let me say this, eternity, life is too short and eternity is too long. Eternity is too long to allow pride to cause you to miss the miracle of the moment. Amen. I see that hand. There's somebody else today. You want to receive Jesus as your Savior. Put your hand up high. We're going to pray for you today. Amen. Could you come down here? Amen. Just encourage them. Come down. I want to pray with you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Just come down here. I want to pray a simple prayer with you. If you're ready to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Give them an encouragement as they come. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Come on. Don't allow pride to stop you. Don't allow pride to stop you. This is your moment. Come on. I know the Lord is dealing with other people. Respond right now. Just come down. It's not about embarrassing you. It's about you simply responding and saying yes to Jesus Christ. Is there anybody else here today? You're ready to surrender to Jesus miss your moment. Come on, let's lift our voices one more time. opportunity to come down as well amen we're doing this because we love you because the time is short and so if you've been away from the Lord but today you want to come back to him come down we're going to include you in this prayer in Jesus name let's lift our voice one more time the cross the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning says in Psalm 139 that he has written all of your days for you 
God in his, in his sovereign wisdom and ability was able to see this moment today where you would respond to him and he's going to do a miracle in your heart. And so I ask you to just simply look at me today and pray this simple prayer, but pray it from your heart and the Lord's going to do a miracle in your life because you're loved and the cross proves it. You're loved. The cross declares it. The cross declares you matter. You matter to him. Maybe nobody else have ever, has ever shown you that kind of respect or love. Maybe nobody else has ever, you know, done anything for you. But know this, the cross declares that you are loved by God. So just pray this simple prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in my heart that you were born of a virgin. That you lived a perfect life. And that when you died on the cross, you died in my place, bearing my sin and shame. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus Christ, and forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for calling me. Thank you, Jesus, for cleansing me. I'm yours. You're mine. Come on, give a shout of praise to the Lord. lunch in the ringside after the service and if you received a guest pack and you there's a little card on that you can fill that in as you're leaving and leave it in the foyer if you'd like somebody to pray for you if you want more information about the church reminding you about our hoodies as well so we'll see you all next week have a blessed week we love you all